African American women spend billions every year on black hair products. Even though they only make up 10% of the American population, they buy 70% of all wigs and extensions purchased here in the United States. Well, it's very important. They take their last dime to get their hair done. <laughs> they go hungry before they let their hair go to, uh, look bad. My journey into the world of black hair begins in Oakland, California at the Black Hair Extravaganza. When you look at her, it's like her crown. She's a queen, you know, so she, she needs like extra pieces and braids and big hair. It's like a crown. I just feel like I'm saying your hair important. If your hair messed up, you feel me? Brothers ain't gonna try to get at you. Uh, you ain't females gonna knock you, you feel me? Basically, you gotta have your hair tight. We express our beauty. In fact, the Bible speaks to us about our hair being a treasure. So it's just something we've always kept in our culture. But with that huge market, who controls it? Where does the money end up? Where do the billions go? I decided to try to find out here at the Black Hair Extravaganza. Follow the money. Step three, apply the thermal straightening bulb. Section the hair into... We think the uh, African American style is a very big business. Almost every way because they change the style for hair. Everybody wants to be a part of our market because we're the number one consumer. We spend 10 to 1 on anybody in here. In the retail market right now, majority of the retail stores are ran by Koreans. And more of the Korean stores that are ran by, the 90%, are supported 100% by black African money. It's so unfair, you know, that they take our money. But once again, part of it is our blame. We allow what happens. Is this true that the Koreans dominate the black hair industry? What you're looking at is one of the black beauty supply magazines that inform people who are interested in black hair products. All the ads and articles are about African Americans and their hair. And even though all the information is about blacks, half of this magazine is in Korean. And this magazine, Beauty Times, which is the number one publication for black beauty store owners, is written entirely in Korean. It's here, inside Beauty Times, that I spot Dr. Tony Leno, a black hair expert who writes a monthly column for this magazine, a column which not even he can read. I contact him and he invites me to Los Angeles to learn more about the Southern California black hair industry. Now where we are now, this is the uh, famous Crenshaw Corridor, where most of the, many of the elite black businesses are. And right here on the corner of 54th and Crenshaw, South Central Los Angeles, and this is beautiful wigs, this is the Korean owned uh, hair store, they, they sell hair of all types. In your store here, what percentage of your, of your business is Afro American? Uh, about 100 percent. 99.9. Okay. In other words, 99.9. 99.9. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and up here on these walls, right here, these racks, all the way around, are, are, are the hair that's used for, uh, for for weaves and for extensions. Jenny Jackson, they come over here, pick it up in a virgin human hair. Vivica Fox. I saw it in several weeks, then I cut inside for her. Um, I've been knowing him a long time. Okay. Richard Price. Yeah, 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 that's Little Richard. Yeah, Little Richard. This city alone only had 10 beauty supply stores 20 years ago. Now there are, there are over 100 Korean-owned beauty supply stores. Okay, you're looking at a typical beauty supply store, Korean-owned beauty supply store. But all these products have one common denominator. They are all aimed at the Afro community. One of the things that the Koreans are doing now 
and they predicted this themselves uh, back in 1999, and it's happening now. Since they control 80% of the distribution of Afro hair care products, especially professional products that are sold in beauty supply stores only, it only stands to reason they can control what gets distributed. They are creating their own line of products or buying out existing black-owned companies. I don't see a reversal of this at all. Uh, it's just getting deeper and deeper. With the Koreans controlling the retail and wholesale distribution, they are slowly making inroads into taking over the black manufacturers. We're going to Kazuri Products. They are a black-owned manufacturer of, uh, of hair care products, but specialize primarily in curling irons, pressing combs, and the stove heaters that you heat the irons up in. This is Lucky White, who owns Kazuri along with her husband. We have been in business for over 30 years, and we are a black company selling to black beauty supplies and also to black hairstylists, and we make a quality product. Everyone look at our product as being the best in the industry. However, since the Asians have been here, they are cutting us out, telling us that our product is not in demand any longer. The Korean connection. About three years ago, they started to blacklist our product as they brought their own products in. They start to manufacture curling irons, and they duplicate everything that you manufacture. They were duplicated, and then they start to slowly cut back on orders, and then they tell you that your product is not in demand. So they would make something that very similar that looked like ours, and then they try and sell the consumer on this product. Can you show me some products from Kazuri? Kazuri? Kazuri products. This is Kazuri product. Yes. This is all Kazuri. This is an A1. So you have maybe three Kazuris and then the you rest. This Kazuri, this A1 product, this Stella. Stella. Yeah. Who makes three brands. Who makes Stella? Uh, you know they are B-sale, the wholesalers. And they make this, this product. Actually they make a copy you know, for the other brand, you know. Now oh. Kizuri like uh, A, A plus but their, their uh, brands you know they are no good quality not good they, quality no just copy for the others they are really trying to shut us out of the industry they're telling you they will no longer distribute your product in these stores they tell us that our product is not in demand any longer but that's just a excuse not to purchase our products this is actually um, a tea bumper by Kazuri. I use it all the time. This is the place to be, a black hair salon in San Jose, California. Kazuri products are much in demand. We use them here. We have a setup here. We also have one here. We use their, their spritz as well. We use their whole lineup, so they are in high demand. We have to look at saving our community as well as saving this industry. We are a nation within this nation, and we're just giving everything away. And we cannot do that any longer. We have to stand up and fight. We are, we are beautiful black people. If we have to wear our hair short, so be it. Let's wear it short, but let's uh, get this under control where we control the industry and not let someone else come in and then set up and take all our revenue out of the community. But can Mrs. White and other black manufacturers fight back against this? New Star Beauty Supply, the largest wholesaler of black beauty supplies on the West Coast. New Star also manufactures their own products for sale to the ethnic market. Mr. Moon is manager of New Star. You are the number one biggest uh, the ethnic the distributor. In the West Coast? Yes. You guys are? Mm -hmm. we trying to like one-stop buying now. Like. We took them as being a friend and they, that, that they would not come in and try and take over the whole industry, but that's what they have done. And they got in, now they control it, and they are really, uh, they are um, boasting about it and they are talking about it, and then they are laughing at us all the way to the bank. Mm -hmm. Thank 
How do the Korean retailers get the money to start up these beauty supply stores? To find out, I traveled to the University of California at Berkeley and spoke with Professor John Lee. Many of the ones that started recently came from South Korea that was much, and much more enriched. So by selling their farm or by selling their apartment, they could have this initial pot of money to start uh, relatively small businesses in urban areas. Furthermore, they had encouragement, sometimes quite explicitly in terms of funding by relatives, friends, and other sorts of religious or whatnot networks to provide them with money to start their business. So it's fair to say that there are all sorts of formal and informal means by which Korean Americans and South Korean business people dominate the market and are uh, implicitly unwilling to let competition challenge their dominance. So the two magazines, they're all in Korean. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. does, that, does that seem like fair business practice? Yeah, well, as I said before, um, this is one of the mechanisms by which uh, Koreans, South Koreans and Korean American merchants um, ensure the domination of the market. It's all to see. Later, I learned that what we're seeing now, the Korean domination of the black hair industry, had its start back in the early 60s with the help of both the Korean government and the United States government. This is Chosun, one of the most respected newspapers in South Korea. And it's inside the archives of this newspaper that I discovered a document from 1965 in which the wig manufacturers in Korea convinced the Korean government to ban the export of raw hair, making it impossible for anyone to manufacture wigs from the highly desirable Korean hair population, except for the Korean manufacturers themselves. And six months after the Korean ban on the export of hair, the United States government banned the import of any wig that contained hair from China. This ban on Chinese wigs virtually locked in the wig business for these South Korean merchants. So it seems that what we're seeing today, the Korean domination of the black hair industry, had its start with the help of both the Korean and the United States government almost 40 years ago. You blow the whistle on what's going on just like we are discussing now and inform people. They'll be surprised and delighted, too. Well, I think people are informed, but, I mean, black people as a whole, they just don't have much unity, as Koreans do, or any other race. They just don't have much unity. As a whole, we don't, we don't stick together. Well, you know, this is a new millennium, and people, if they look at the past, and perhaps they can um, deduce from that that they can change the future they based can. on the past. They can. But the young people have to have to be enlightened. The black dollar needs to be spent with your black people with as much as possible. Yeah. We kind of take each other for granted sometimes, but I think when things like this happen, we always seem to come together like other tragedies. And you know, human nature allows us to do that. We can come together for human tragedies, but when it comes down to the to the almighty dollar, that's not the case. They did not seem to pull together for the dollar. Denny's Restaurant, Oakland, California. Here, members of the black beauty supply industry in Northern California have gathered to discuss the Korean domination of their industry and the possibility of creating an organization to take back the black hair industry. Now, we used to have a, a, a total monopoly on this beauty business. Now we've lost, it's only about two or three of us in Oakland now, and it used to be nothing but us in Oakland purchasing these products. Most of the uh, beauty supplies in the Bay Area, Korean beauty supplies, they have organizations. Mm -hmm. And their organization, most of the time, they tell who to sell and who not to sell. Yeah. Like five years ago or four years ago, when Micro Yaki was so popular and so hot, they wouldn't sell to me. Yeah. And the reason they wouldn't sell to me is like, uh, glamorous, and Ebony told them not to sell. 
and sometimes we used to order through a mat, you know, like mat appear mm -hmm. supply. Mm -hmm. they because they don't, they don't see... They, they, black. <laughs> <laughs> they don't think you're black, the Koreans no. don't think you're no, black. No, I mean, when they call me, they think that, accent. you know, I'm a Korean store. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So what is the, uh, are you black or Asian? How do you feel about that? Are you black or Asian? I was like, That's crazy. what is... What does that have to do with me purchasing a product from you? So, since they can't sell it to us, why we can't sue them? Thank you. We have people that are able to get these hair products. I think that's where we need to start. And then we go to the next level. Because if they don't want to sell to you, they will figure out a way not to sell to you. A lawsuit will just make them even stronger, stronger willed about it. The way I'm looking at it, if you, if you walked into Macy's, Macy's discriminated against you, what would you do? Well, you know what, it's a whole different world. We, no, you have more, okay. If you, if, you don't, if you don't tell me nothing, I'm gonna keep doing it. Okay, lawsuits, may get the attention. Bad publicity may get the attention, but you know what will get the attention? Money. 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 If your money does not go to them and it goes to somebody else, and then once you start giving money, you start swaying the way they think. Just a few months after this meeting, Bobsa is created. The Black-Owned Beauty Supply Association their first event is here at this gospel event on the square in Oakland, California. It's here that they begin to raise awareness of the black hair issue and promote a hair show. I'm from Dallas. I got my hair from uh, Korean Beauty Supply. What do you think about what they're trying to do? I think that is great. I am just like so on board with that. We are a black owned beauty supply and what we are $10 in Dallas in Texas. We are like all about supporting black owned businesses and we complain about that a lot that there aren't any black owned beauty supplies in Texas so you know, I think it's great. I think it's great. I think it's about time. I just think it's very interesting. I got a little information about it. They had a little line card that gave me names of different people in different areas, which is very helpful. And then they are under association with these irreparable hairdressers. So, and that's important to me because your hair is important. If this generation goes, no beauty supply, we can forget it. We can forget it. Nobody will come up. We're just barely scratching the surface trying to say, hey, wait, you can't take that from me. Hey, wait a minute. I'm a part of this. What are you doing? They won't have the know-how or the power to be able to go into that because it'll be totally dominated by Koreans. Totally dominated. Richmond, California. The members of Bobsa are meeting here in the back room of a local beauty supply store. Black men positive ad in the magazine that we saw. Okay, so the total amount two two thousand seven. And finalized plans and a budget for the black hair show they're promoting in just a few weeks. This is the first Bob's a Hair Show, held in Northern California. Thank you everyone for attending. We really appreciate your time and we hope we made a difference in your thought pattern.
funny thing happened in, in New York. I went into a Korean store and asked him where, if he could wholesale me some of the things he had. He told me no. I said, okay, if you could tell me where I could get it wholesale. He told me the Koreans are not going to let these niggas get into the business. You know? And he's in a, a black neighborhood in Brooklyn. He was Korean himself? Yeah. He's in a, a Korean hair store. You think black people can get back into the Oh, they could get back, but the Koreans are not going to let us in it. We have to do it ourselves. It's great because the, the, um, our money should be kept in the community. And buying um, um, outside, buying with different ethnic groups, are, and, and they're not recycling the money back into our communities. And this way it's standing out for me. Oh, it's beautiful, 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 beautiful. I love it, I love it, I love it. Clintex Laboratories is one of a handful of black-owned manufacturers. Currently, their brand of product is only distributed through hair salons here in the United States. Besides making their own brand of products, they also act as a manufacturer for others. This, this is our compounding area. This is where we manufacture all of uh, our products. This is where I first started. When I quit my job, I went and bought these two stainless steel drums and started in the basement of my home. After the batch was made, I would take a measuring cup, go in and fill each bottle one at a time. This is a regular relaxer. Uh, the percent of sodium hydroxide is 1.9 percent. Even after more than 20 years in business, Steve Luster is unable to get distribution for his products from any of the Korean distributors. I do not blame the Koreans for anything. It's totally the black consumers, the black business people, the black churches. It's our fault because we have not taken the time to educate our people on economics, on what we need to be doing to assure that we have jobs, that we have a, a sound business practice. We haven't taken time to do that. If there are two products and one product was $2 cheaper at the Korean store than a black owned store, where would you shop? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll be honest with you. Where would you shop? Two dollars cheap. I'll probably shop at the Korean store. Oh, thank you very much. I couldn't get a loan for business, but as you can see, I am in business today. Okay? So you cannot depend on the government for a handout, and you cannot depend on people to help you. We, we have enough power as a group. If we have the ability to work together, and pull together, we have enough economical resources within our race and our communities to turn this thing around. What do you think about the idea of a boycott? I think it would be a wonderful thing. I think that would be a thing that would get a lot of people's attention. I think a boycott would change the situations um, and, where, and where they are now. Like with the Koreans, for example, if they don't want to sell certain African Americans hair and whatnot for their business so that they can continue to progress, a boycott, stopping the dollars, would get everybody's attention. The story continues with members of BOBSA traveling across the country, including here in Pasadena, California, where they're informing people about the black hair industry. Network. The, the, the states including the showing them parts of the film that you've seen to this point. Where does the money go? Unemployment in the black community is 10 percent and the white community is 5 percent. The only way we're going to change this trend is to look to each other to uh, circulate that black dollar mm -hmm. back into the black community. We have the power. I know we have the power. It's just a matter of us going forth and doing it. Next stop, Atlanta, Georgia. 
then on to Chicago, Illinois. Is the black hair situation in Chicago the same as on the West Coast? Here in Chicago, I randomly select one block in the south side of Chicago. And it's here that I find not only one, but four Korean-owned beauty supply stores on the same block, all within a hundred feet of each other. Look at this. Uh, this shows how this store is 33 years old, part of the history. But uh, I have to replace with the, some of these hairs. Excuse me, girls. What town am I in? We're in Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Chicago. And let's see your hairdo. Let's see it. Whoa, turn around. Who did that? My mom. Wow. Now, um, I see a, a beauty supply store right across the street. Yeah. Is that black owned or Korean owned? That's, I think that's uh, Korean, Korean owned. Korean. Sorry? Korean, Korean owned. What do you think about the Koreans owning all the black beauty supply stores? Well, it's very not good because I think the black people should be able to own some things. Yeah. And just not all Koreans should be able to own. But I think because why they're not doing it is because discouragement. And black most black folks, they're really uh, just like going to jail now because other people are convincing them to do other different things like crimes and different stuff like that. So that's why. How many black-owned beauty supply stores are there in Chicago that you know of? I don't. How long have you been in the business? Like uh, 14 years ago. Yeah, 14. No. Just like a something like this. How many black-owned beauty supply stores are there in Chicago? How many? Yeah, black-owned. I think so, over 10. Yeah. Lot of, you know, more. 10 stores. O over 10, I think, right. yeah. And how many Korean-owned beauty supply Korean stores? Korean, uh, so almost 80%. 80, 80 uh, maybe, many? I think, 300. Some 300 or some, you know, different store. Like. This is how the boys wear nowadays. Sure. They got braids. Yeah. This is how yeah. they do. Check it out. Close look. Close look. Oh, Eddie Kine from the Shot Town, Westside. All right. Let them know where you at. Peace, yeah. That's your set. True, okay. true. Yeah. Now, Malcolm X talked about African American women straightening their hair, didn't he? What do you have to say about that? Well, oh, well. that was a situation back then that was occurring at the time. It was yeah. just a lack of education, yeah. and misunderstanding well, things. things is but he didn't mean what you know what exactly saying. like that. If you get in depth into yeah. things, he don't exactly mean that as straight exactly. as trying to be like white women. He's trying to show them a way that the, 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 to know your roots first, right. and you can do anything you want to. But as long as you know your roots, can't nobody you know tell you nothing. From, know and you right. always going to be something. He just meant that knowledge, brother. And the situation doesn't seem much different here in Oakland, California, where there are only a handful of black-owned stores and over 40 Korean-owned stores. Including this Korean shop that just recently opened up next door to Oakland's famous Black Muslim Bakery. San Mateo, California. It's here that Bobsa, the Black-Owned Beauty Supply Association, has its first annual Unity Dinner. And as the saying goes, united we stand. I think we all need to stick together because it's sad that these Koreans are making so much money off of us and they're not giving back anything to the community. They're not even really giving us jobs. And it's just, we have to do something. I think we should start a, a huge boycott and try to spread the word, do a strong media campaign where we don't go into their salons and I guarantee you they'll start giving us more respect and we need to start opening up more black beauty supply stores and we just need to all stick together. We as blacks, we 
are only 11 or 12 percent of the total population. Yet we are consumers of over 33 percent of all the hair care products sold in this country. And that's why they settled in our neighborhoods and they specialize in hair. We are 80 percent of the purveyors of hair, the users of hair. That's why they, they came to, into our neighborhoods. And I can't be mad at them because we left that market laying right out there in the street and they came along and picked it up. So don't, wait, don't encourage anybody to throw a rock to a Korean beauty st supply store, <laughs> okay? I think now though, and I see so much vibrancy here, and especially with this new organization, you've got a new feeling of togetherness that we don't even have on the East Coast. And to the fact that you have decided that it's time now to forget the mistakes we've made, especially with the Koreans, who was smart enough to know that they couldn't make it with the white companies. They would not get across those big white distributors who represented the major white lines like Redkin, Matrix, Paul Mitchell. They couldn't cut it. They were ostracized. And so they turned to us who were open young, and probably didn't realize the value of our industry. And they made it big with us. But we've got to forget that now. It's hard. And we've got to outsmart what is out there. And let's go together to do it. Who knows what will happen tomorrow? I'm just going to stay in the game and, if for no other reason to see what happens next. What will the future of the black hair industry be? Can BOBSA and the African American community be successful in taking back part of this industry? It's ironic but true that the first American woman self-made millionaire was an African-American named Madam C.J. Walker, who earned her fortune through the manufacture and distribution of black hair products. <laughs>